and welcome to the Love Mish Podcast. I'm your host, Mish, and it's a billion podcasts to listen to, and the universe guided you right here to this one. I've been podcasting for about three years now, so happy third birthday to me. I'm super excited to continue growing and sharing my journey with you. So welcome to my world. Hey, loves, and welcome to another podcast episode. I always start over. Hey, loves, and welcome to another episode of the Love Mish Podcast. It is literally like almost 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know why I'm up. It's been like a month now and I always go to sleep at like 2. It's just driving me crazy, but I just be up. I was like, let me go ahead and do this podcast. So I told you guys that we were going to do the Oprah Winfrey Super Soul Sunday interview. And it's happening. Wink, wink. It's happening right now. I literally was going to write down the questions and um, answer them and then just read the answers. But I'm going to do it right off the dome. It's going to come from the heart. It's going to come from the soul. It's going to be raw, going to be real, authentic, all that good stuff. But before we get into the questions, you know, I like to do my podcast recos. So I am so excited for this first reco. Let me tell you, me and my sisters. Well, my mother had four kids. My older sister, me, my baby sister, and my baby brother. And we all have business ideas, right? We all have started and stopped at different, you know, points and have different life things going on. But drum roll please it is my sister's my baby sister's turn um to give it a go for business she has always been the one in the background helping us um but shouting us out on social media helping us post our content on our accounts um just like tremendous background support from her heart just ready to serve and it is her time to be the CEO and for us to usher in and give her that love and support. And I am so happy to do so. So the local business reco for this podcast is Nia Nails. Now my sister goes by Nitra. So it's so cute that she added her name in her business. Hello. Does that sound familiar? Love me. Oh, okay. It's like you got to put you in your brand. It's, it's you. It's a part of you. You're your birth to a baby so congratulations me sister i am so fucking proud of you you are gonna have your own star so let me tell you what her story is about um neon nails my sister loves all things glow in the dark so she i didn't even know she had this talent she can make nails like i'm gonna list a link where you can go to the website her website is neonnails.com let me spell it for you it's n-e-e-o-n nails.com spell it all out n-e-e-o-n-n-a-i-l-s.com her email is the same at gmail.com and i have a link for her pinterest where you can check out her nails i completed my order and i'm not done um i had show my mom i show my cousin i was like just telling everybody like hey support you know because i'm so fucking proud of her and i'm deep on the spiritual pages like on my um telegram on my 99 percent on my discord like i'm a part of groups like that uh let me just pause for a moment sorry sis Social media got so big when you advertise. It's like, are you even reaching anyone? So I noticed when I went to 99, when I went to Telegram, and when I went to Discord, it's smaller rooms, smaller groups. So when you post something, people are like, oh my God, that's brilliant. I'm so proud of you. Let me go check it out right now. Girl, what the fuck is going on? Y'all hear that? It is too early in the morning. Get it together. Um... So I'm happy that I'm in these groups as I'm able to share. I'm like, hey, support my sis, support my sis. And I hope she's getting a flood of customers. And so here I am sharing it with you, my babies, my loves. Um, so please support my sister. Her nails are so beautiful. I ordered a pink pair of nails. And I don't know what it is, but I, I've, I've gotten nails. I, I love nails. I miss getting nails. But I am such an empath. It hurts putting them on. It hurts taking them off. I can't even explain it. But my nails are so beautiful and white. Every time I go get my regular nails done, the nail person is like, oh my gosh, your nails are so pretty. They're so strong. What do you do? And all I know is like, I don't eat meat. I mean, that's all I can say. But my toenails grow long. My fingernails grow long. And if we can just get my hair to catch the hill up. 
But um, I said all that to say I still support it. I still bought the nails. It's it's I love her nails because she has this glue that you can put on your nails. Um, and you can just stick the nail right on and like in seconds, literally, and be gone. The, but the thing is, because you're not using acrylic, they end up falling off, which is fine because I can still pick them up. I, I keep them. I put them in a bag and whenever I want to wear them again, I wear them. So it's almost to me like, you know how our wigs are? Put it on, take it off. It's kind of like the nails are put on, put off. And I've never seen nails like that before. So I think her idea is fucking brilliant. Um, but in addition to that, since she wants to honor me on my journey where, you know, I'm going to buy the nails, but I'm, I'd want to stay more so to the natural. She does freaking nail art. So you know how you get a, a fake tattoo and it comes on the paper, you wet it and then voila, it's on your skin. They do that for nails too. So she surprised me and put those in a bag and I was just like, oh my God, because one thing about me, I'm an idealist. I, feel, I really feel like a lot of these deals are for our deals are for other people, but I just be wanting to birth them myself. But I'm like, hey, you should do this. You should do that. And I just feel it. Like, there's so many celebrities and people that I just, under their page, I'll be like, hey, check this person out. Or, oh, you should do this. Or, oh, you need to do a podcast. Or, oh, you need to. Oh, and I just be sharing because I just, I, I love learning and sharing. And it just be like, oh, they did it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And no one will ever know that I told that person that y'all need to do a pot, you know, you need to do a podcast. I told B. Simone she needs to do a podcast. Hello. You know what I mean? Not saying that they probably weren't already thinking of that, but prime example, before Kevin Samuels passed away, I had sent him an email saying, you know, hey, your your message, you know, it may be true, but the delivery is, is off. So, you know, I was trying to explain, like, you know, maybe you can invite some uh, women on your panel and do dating shows and, you know, just different stuff like that just to kind of change the image and change his brain a little bit. And I kid you not, a few weeks later, the man died. But I was able to show my mom and I'm like, look, I sent this man this email. Like, he really has some great information. Just if your delivery is off, and that's and that was a message for the world, you can have the greatest message ever. But if your delivery is off, it will fall on deaf ears. And then and vice versa. The devil can tell you some great information. But if you so hold holier than thou you're gonna miss it so that goes both ways but anyways congratulations sissy poo i am so fucking proud of you and i'd be like nene but she'd be like don't call me nene but okay your store is, is called neon nail so you like me but um that's what she is at my phone you need me in my phone <laughs> but um wait let me make sure did i just do me oh no i didn't need you i didn't need you okay my bad. I did do need your in my phone, but Neon Nails is so cute. I'm so proud of you. I can't wait to support you. I'm going to show you with the whole fucking world. We're trying to get bags on bags on bags. And um, I know this is not going to be her only business. I can see her doing so much more. And I'm just so very, very proud of her. Um, I can say in my life, good Lord, life is like a fucking roller coaster but in my life my mom has been my number one supporter and my sister i could tell them right now i'm gonna be a president and they're gonna be cheering me on and helping me pass off flyers like it's nothing that i can say that i don't want to do that they won't give me their full support and i just love that because i know a lot of people don't have that and um I just really appreciate that. Like they're gonna they're gonna bat for me. I could I could even run for president and lose and you know they'll still have my support. Like so many endeavors I've started and stopped and you know just have um they've they've always supported me. But one thing I've come to realize is you they can give me all the support in the world, but if they cheering at a hundred and I'm cheering at fifty, it's not gonna work. I gotta be cheering at two hundred and they cheering at one hundred, and that's when it's gonna manifest. Like you got to go harder for yourself than anyone else. So I always had these visions and these dreams, but I have to put that energy there. I have to be my own cheerleader, and I have to go, you know, two times as hard, and it'll um, manifest. So shout out to my sis. Please check out her links, and you know, I can't wait to see what the future unfolds with your business your first business baby i'm gonna say that so a video movie tv record would be what dreams may come i actually saw that i haven't seen it yet i saw a preview of it and i was mesmerized i was like i got to see this because it reminds me of a book 
um, that I haven't even fucking finished yet. But the name of the book was Heaven and Hell, The Journey of Chris and Serena Davis by Kenneth Ziegler. And they got in a fucking, they were married and got in a fucking car accident. Chris saw white lights and all oh, and angels and his ass went to heaven. But Serena ass, she saw red and black and demons dragging her ass to hell. And they were torturing her. She was in the lake of fire and she was desperate to get away. And she kept, she ran away the first time they caught her ass, dumped her back in the river um oh no i think she was i think something was eating her and letting her skin grow back and eating her and letting her skin go back she escaped and then they threw her ass in the river where your skin melt off and regenerate your skin melt off and regenerate baby she escaped from there and she climbed up this damn wall and found a fallen angel and the reason he was in hell is he fell in love with one of the human beautiful women and uh, god's punishment was to send him to hell so it's not like he was with Satan trying to overthrow God, but because he still sinned and that led him there. But because he wasn't 100% like Satan, he just did a little sin. <laughs> a little sin. Um, he still had good in him. So he had plants in the cave. He even tried to keep humans. He got caught one time and, you know, the, the demons threatened him or whatever because, you know, he's stuck there too. But he ended up keeping her, and so she has a little bit of break. She's still in hell, but his ass in heaven keep thinking about her. Um, he's walking around and seeing mansions and meeting people and meeting God and stuff, and he like, where's my damn wife? So he goes to this library, or the book of, you know, everybody has a book of life, and he looks in his book, and then, the, you know, of course, she's going to come up, so he wants to look at her book, and he sees her in hell. He's like, oh, my God, he wants to go get her. But I'm ready for him to go to fucking hell already and get her ass. But it's it's it draw it's drawn out. And I guess I'm just impatient because I read so much about her. And then it'd be little snippets of him and then back to her and little snippets of him. I'm like, nigga, is you going to go get your wife? Is you going to rescue her? Like, come, come get me from hell. That's what I'm talking about. He can't even enjoy heaven because he wants his wife in heaven with him. And that is a man. That is the ultimate love. You are willing to give up your ticket in heaven to get her from hell to be with you like the fuck because because to be honest if you so gang ho on getting her that could get your ass kicked out of heaven and he just loves her so much so so anyways when i saw the movie that's what it reminded me of and i was like i wonder because a lot of these movies they be based on books but I feel like if they can't get the rights to the book, they just going to create a storyline around the book. Like, my nigga pay these people their credits because it's very similar. So, I, another reason why I want to see it is... I forgot the man's name. Well, let me look up his name. Um, Dow Fire. I can't believe... Robin Williams? Thank you. Robin Williams is in there. And I don't know who who the woman is, but... Uh, she, he dies and he's in heaven and then she gets sick and, uh, she commits suicide and he wants to get her from hell too. So I feel like they basically stole somebody. They stole them people book and made a different movie, but I guess I can't really say that because we all create, you could take, you could look at one picture and make a million different pictures off of it from your perspective. So is it really copying no it's just co-creating or recreating but they could have just paid these people for their book read uh turn the book into a movie and cut that man a check but that's okay so i i haven't seen it yet but since i know it's gonna be like the book just the preview of it and what was i looking at where i saw the preview probably one of my free movie apps and i was just mesmerized because you know you can click go do skip go past it and get to your movie your free movie but I was so mesmerized. I looked at the whole thing and I never do that. So I can't wait to see what dreams may come true. Plus, I miss Robin Williams. I love his movie, Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, it was another movie, Jumanji. It was another movie. Bicentennial Man is my ultimate favorite. And do you see how old that movie was? And Tesla uh, just not telling us about the robots. Maybe they banned on the robots because they had to test them for so long. Let me tell you how I know. When you go to Disney World and they be like, it's a small world after 
world out of my fucking robots. They been had them damn robots, but they stuck in damn Disney World, and now they're finna make them go commercial. That's the only difference. Um, so yeah, it'll be nice seeing him again because I really feel like he was a good soul, and I don't think he committed suicide. I feel like in Hollywood, if you don't do those deep, dark, ugly things. Uh, they either gonna say you had a drug overdose, which all drug addicts in the world, you know your craft, that's your drug, you know your limit. So, unless it's a kid, come on, I don't, or a first time user maybe, I, I just don't be believing that. Like, you smoke weed forever, and, or you do dope or whatever forever, and you've been an alcohol for whatever. Like, how you just all of a sudden die? Like, you, you know your drug, you know your vice. And or they'll make you commit suicide. Say you committed suicide, but he was the happiest. How how many comedians have you heard of that committed suicide? Like that doesn't even make sense. A comedian who's full of love and life and laughter committed suicide. Like it's it's it didn't get me. It didn't get to me. So maybe it hit the rest of the world. But it's a no for me. The man was killed set up he didn't want to complete a sacrifice or whatever the hell they wanted him to do maybe torture some little kid ain't no telling hollywood is disgusting um where else was i going with that so they'll kill you um oh and another thing that i wanted to say dr sabi you healed all these people you took to supreme court and won and won with your witnesses over 100 people and won with facts not even a doctor. You mean tell me you don't have a PhD? You were out here curing people and all these motherfucking white coats with PhDs and cure the damn thing because they don't want to. They're going to co- continue to collect that money and that insurance. And it's always going to go back to the money. But he ended up dying from a disease. Now, how the hell? you? That's how I know it be fake. You cure diseases, you died of a disease. You're funny as hell. You're a comedian. You commit suicide. Like, it just don't... It don't add up. But anyways, so that's the movie. Podcast, audio record would be Girlfriends Pray Podcast. When I was deep in a Christian world, hello, and it's still there. Let me just explain my religion. I'm um, omnis, omnism, which means I take whatever resonates for me from whatever religion, from atheism all the way through christianism uh uh yoruba to catholic like line them all up i just take whatever resonates with me like a buffet so to speak but when i was deep in the christian world and i didn't look at shit like you couldn't tell me if it was if it wasn't about jesus and god it was the devil but you can't be like that you're gonna miss out on life that's like only putting um pepper in your food baby you know about salt you know about garlic you don't know about onion powder? You don't know about Caesar salt? What? It's like you just, okay, you just gonna put pepper on all your food. But, um, where was I going with that? Oh, I used to wake up. I had found, I don't even know how, like stuff just be finding me. But there was this group called Girlfriends Pray. You would call this phone line at like six in the morning and they would pray. And I'm talking about, you know how I, I come from the old church. Like we had a prayer towel. We would be praying all day. Like I'm hungry. They still praying and sweating and shouting and stuff. Like my nigga, I'm hungry. Lord, answer the prayer. Um, But they, there was like those, and it be women too. I mean, the men be in them, but the women is the ones that be tearing. And so it be those strong, powerful prayers. And I love them. But I wasn't getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning no more. So it's been years. And then I don't know how I ran across them again. They got a podcast and they put the prayers on the podcast. I was like, Mom, girlfriend's prayer got a podcast. She's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, you ain't tell me. Because I was not get. I don't know. I just couldn't keep getting up at 6. It was just like, all right, Lord. But the prayers are so powerful. So you could be washing your dishes. You could wash your clothes. You could do homework. You could wake up in the morning, push play. You know, get that annoying. Get that prayer covering you. And keep it going. Um, so yeah, check out that podcast. And then when it comes to God, here's my philosophy. I go by so many names, it's ridiculous. Um, I feel like a lot of people go by so many names, and then you just continue to evolve, even if you don't want to go by names. Every different emotion of yours has a different persona. You're not the same when you're angry as when you're excited, as when you're happy, as when you're sad, as when you're aggravated or hangry, and just go over the whole emotional wheel. We want to call these people schizo. No, they're human fucking beings with different emotions that is going to result with different fucking personalities. There's no way 
you can be mad as hell and tell somebody, I love you with so much love and joy. It's going to be an angry, I love you. And it probably going to have a whole different face features and muscles and like all oh, demeanor. So anyways, when I look at religion, I look at God having one fucking name that we don't even know. Because it even says in the Bible, as humans, we probably can't even pronounce it. It's probably just a sound. It's probably a, a musical note. But anyways, we don't even fucking know. So to be, so with our little human brains, we come up with these high names to call God. And he just answers, or she, or both energies, he, she, answers the name. Because if I create it all and you call me blue, well, damn it, ain't nobody else make you. So you must be talking about me. You get what I'm saying? I don't think it's disrespectful. It's like, I know y'all niggas don't know, you know, but I know you talking to me. That's just kind of how I see it. I'm just like so over the divisions, so over the small mindedness. Like if you and your husband gave birth to a child, no matter what they called you, you know, you mama and daddy ain't nobody else make you. Y'all remember the song, the day, the time, the hour, all that good stuff. Y'all know y'all created that child. So no matter what the child calls you, you know, you mom and dad, period. So anyways. My little tidbit. So, Reiki healing prayer record would be to all the guys and goddesses in the world. Yes, you. Keep growing and share your gift with the world. I feel like Oprah has a gift. We all have a gift. And I think some people share that gift. Some people haven't discovered that gift. Some people hide that gift. Some people don't pursue that gift because they think it won't make them money. But the gag is... If you follow your gift, the money will come. Maybe not instantly, but it will. And I feel like we are like plants. Some plants grow super fast. Some are slow as hell. And I know I'm a slow group, slow ass growing plant. Um, But when I finally do grow, <laughs> I'm going to remember everybody that stuck by me. Period. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if you know what your gift is, share it. If you don't know what your gift is, take time out to discover it. If you don't want to share your gift because you feel it isn't lucrative, then just carve out a little bit of time to share it. Whether it's if you, like if you're an artist and you don't want to be a full-time artist because you got to feed your family, I completely understand. But just carve out a little bit of time in your week, not even day, but in your week to draw something and post it. Do you know art can be healing i can be sad as hell and see a beautiful picture and just oh that picture whatever we do it carries our energy and that's what people don't talk about when you speak got your energy on it okay at work that's your energy on it through that job so be careful where y'all eat because people handling your food could be having a nasty attitude in a bad day and you finna eat that same thing with the meat industry those animals are sad and angry as fuck. And when they die, that energy ain't go nowhere. It's in the damn meat and you swallowed it. And and who knows what that's going to be in your life, what that's going to manifest for. Because you just ate the energy. Nobody talks about that. Yes, you ate the energy. You eat energy. You eat the energy in an apple, banana, pear, even animals. So, um... Just carve out that little bit of time just to share that gift because it's going to bless someone. So I think we'd be focusing on the money. That's not what it's about. It's about helping your sisters and brothers because we really are each other. It's one person, which is God, living a million, kajillion lives, however many, in so many different ways from atoms to germs to humans to giants to planets. Whatever you can imagine, it's still God. <laughs> so that's the funny part, like. That's why I'm I'm learning to not hate so much because it's still God in reverse. Like, how can I say that God is just good when I get mad? I'm not even all fucking good. You do the right thing, you gonna meet uh Mimi the fuck. <laughs> so, um, I can't be something that God isn't. That's what I've come to realize. Like. If I could be, if I could kill to protect myself, okay, God can too. So, and if I can get anger, or if I can sin, or if I could do evil, okay, God can too. So, 
Anyways, that's just my little philosophy. That's where I'm at spiritually. So the music record would be Protection by, I want to say, Picha. So I want to share like a lot of spiritual music that I've come across. And this this is a YouTube link. She has an evil eye on there and she is singing about protection. I thought that was really, really dope. I'm so proud that she put her gift out there for the world and I can spin it, I can play it, and I can send protection energy in the air and I really do appreciate that. So the next record would be Spiritual Teacher Mentor Guide and I want to give a shout out to Ola Nike Osebole. I remember I ran into her a long, long time ago right up there with Seven Bomar. And she was talking about um, Yoni Pearls and her spiritual journey and this anime called Nana. If you heard my previous top podcast, you heard me talk about Nana. She was the one who put me on. Oh my God, Nana is the most amazing anime I've ever seen. It's all about love and romance, which is right up my lane. Oh my God. Um, and she was just talking about anime and her spiritual journey and how, and she introduced me to the Yoruba and how she went on vacation by herself and um she went out to the water and talked to Mama Wata and just I had never heard of any of this shit before and I think she was on YouTube but now she has a podcast I remember I did her Yearly Pearls I told my sisters about it they did see what thing about me I'm a share I'm gonna I'm share and I'm gonna put you on game so I'm at a journey and I do see now that things repeat themselves because I'm doing the same shit that I did before wow so I started IRS six years ago. I find myself revisiting the same things that I did six years ago. Oh my fucking God. It's true. I just didn't journal or anything like that to be able to go back and reflect. But but now that I'm thinking about it, I'm starting to listen to Seven Bomar again. I done ran back into uh, Ola Nike. I'm about to do my Yoni Pearls again. Oh my God. Like, Wow. This shit repeat. It repeats over and over again. Like, did you learn? Let's see what you're going to do this time. Did you learn? Let's see what you're going to do this time. Like, oh, my fucking God. But that's good. You get a chance to make better choices and do better. So, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um. So, I ordered some Yoni Pearls. I can't wait for them to come. You get three Yoni Pearls. And the first time I did it, you pull all three in. You leave them in. You take them out. And you are able to purge your feminine um area uh, and and all types of things come out if you just go google it the pictures are like wow that came out of me um and i know it's true because we eat toxins and chemicals and plastic and, and and that stuff doesn't come out your body so where does it go it's just sitting and you got to like pluck it out but you want to do it in a safe way so they take these little wooden beads they soak them in herbs and they wrap them um in a cotton and and twirl it with strings so that you'll be able to put it in and take it out so i'm on that journey again i just ordered some but the first time i took three this time her instructions are to put one in the first day after 24 hours take it out and put the next two in and after 48 hours take them out and you'll purge for like seven days and i just cannot wait to do that someone else that i follow let me give a shout out to her as well what her name was i went to her page first but she's not selling them right now so that's when i went to only i remember ola nike was doing it tc atkins tc atkins atkins said that she was doing her yoni pearls for three fucking years and i didn't even know you would just keep it in your damn routine but she had broke up with her boyfriend and she know he was smoking and do all this other stuff that was new and it was messing up her body and stuff and she just wanted to purge and as women with a womb that gives life you know you want to make sure that you clean um that area more than what they teach us i feel like the western the eastern world does things more spiritually and the western world they're gonna give you a prescription and you're gonna get the hell out the, out of their face so i find myself looking into eastern medicine spiritual healings and stuff like that and um i'm about to do my yoni steam as well and back in the days at the women after their menstrual cycle they would steam just to kind of purify themselves 
but you don't really hear these conversations. So I'm just glad that I'm taking a journey on my own because leave it up to the Western society. Now we got all these TV shows and don't nobody talk about uh, Yoni Pearls. Don't nobody talk about steaming, but you talk about hopping on somebody. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, or being somebody, baby daddy or whatever. But anyways, I digress. Let's see. So we have, so yeah, check out Olenike. She has YouTube. She has podcasts. She talks about her spiritual journey. She even does classes and stuff like that. And she's just one of the spiritual mentors, teachers, guys that happen to cross my path. Okay, so the book, so a good book or good read reco, as I mentioned before, will be Heaven or Hell. I do need to finish that. I probably just need to find the audio and let it play. A quote for this podcast would be, no experience is wasted. Everything in life is happening to grow you up, to fill you up, to help you become more of who you were created to be. Oprah went for free. And um, our ex laugh for this podcast would be, I'm tired of explaining to my spiritual guru how emails work. He can't just understand what attachments are. You get it? So in the spiritual community, you're not supposed to be attached to anything. Like Buddha said, don't be attached to anything. So that's what that joke was about. Um, And these are spiritual jokes, by the way. What size of a pizza is the most spiritual? What size of a pizza is the most spiritual? A medium. Isn't that funny? Medium. You know, the people that can talk beyond the veil to the dead or angels and stuff like that and i thought it was pretty funny and the last joke is i don't drink alcohol i drink distilled spirits so i'm not an alcoholic i'm spiritual i thought that was funny like i don't drink alcohol i drink distilled spirits like really so i thought that was cute so now whatever my topic is i just try to find a joke on that topic i thought it was pretty cute and the podcast uh, reference below would be where I pull these questions from. Oprah did an interview with Deepak called Life's Biggest Questions on Super Soul Sunday. And I basically just um, copy all of the questions or, or um, put all the questions in number format. And then after she asks a question, I'll answer. So I get my uh, interview with Oprah, wink, wink. I'm just excited to see what these um what these answers are gonna be. So here we go. Ah, Oprah, it is so nice to meet you. I never thought I would be here today doing this interview with you. My little old podcast, I did not even know I was making such a big impact. So thank you for having me on your Super Soul Sunday. It is a pleasure. I cannot wait to get going with these questions. Oh my gosh! Okay, okay, okay. What's the first question? What is your heart's greatest desire? What is my heart's greatest desire? Oh my God, I don't have one. I have several. I have several. I have several. I have several. So one of my heart's greatest desires is to be a mother. Um, Being a mother to me is more than just giving birth to a child. I feel like God gave birth to all the creations that we see out of love. And I, you know, as a child of God, I want to be able to experience that as well, to create something, to nurture it from infant to adulthood, to to guide it even in adulthood, to nurture it and to see what it in turn creates. So being a mom is more than just a mom. It's, it's, it's tapping into my Godhood of being a creator. And so that's one Another great desire of mine would be to blossom into my full potential. Because I don't know about you or anyone else, but there is a version of me in my mind, in my subconscious, in my heart that's so fucking phenomenal in the future. And I'm not there yet, but I know every choice I make is either pushing me closer to that version or further away. And when I... As long as I'm making steps to that version and becoming the best, the highest, best version of myself, I'm doing the work. 
And the work that you do for yourself is really a a reflection of the work that you're doing in the world. So let me break that down. There's a quote that says, at first I wanted to heal the world. So if you would have asked me years before, hey, what's your great desire to heal the world? But then I ran across a quote that was like, you want to heal the world? Start at home. And I was like, oh, okay. You want, you're trying to feed people overseas, but it's homeless right here on, on, on in your neighborhood. Then I saw another quote that was saying, you want to heal the world? Start with yourself. And I was like, oh my God. When I do the inside work, people watching can start to mimic that. I can have the tools and the resources to be able to share that. And it's just like a domino effect. Like, like how, how you're doing, you grew, you develop, you're doing this show, you're, you're, you're lighting so many matches and you're giving birth to so many other, the next generation of, of spiritual leaders. And it all started with you. So if we all take that time out and start with us and do the work. It's going to over, overflow to others. An- another heart desire of mine would be to meet God. Because I have questions. <laughs> I'm going to be like, what the fuck? First, that's the first sentence. What the fuck? Oh my gosh. Like, you know, all the questions that I've ever wanted to know. You know, why are there murders? Why are there killings? Why are there rapists? Why did you leave me? Why did I have to cycle back so many times? What's going on? You just created us and let us go rogue. You're supposed to stay and, um, you know, fix things if they're gone wrong. Why did you give us free will? No, no, no. Uh, some people took the free will too far. So that's one aspect. And then the other aspect would be, you know, thank you for creating me. You know, I love you so much. And then all the the all the things that we will be able to know because when I read the Bible it's always like you know my thoughts are higher than your thoughts my ways are higher than your ways so I imagine when I finally do meet God I'll get to uh hopefully understand those higher thoughts and those higher ways because on a on an earthly level it's like okay go to work have a family have kids you know get a house but on a God level, it's make a planet, make a solar system, make a galaxy, and who knows what else. So I know there's just two completely different <laughs> ways of thinking. But just to be able to meet my creator, to say, you know, I love you. You know, thank you for being there for me. Thank you for never leaving me, even when I thought I was alone. When I think about God, like in in the Christian generation it's like and god made the heavens and the earth and he separated the waters and uh the vegetation and the animals and and the people and and then he rests on the seventh day like you did all of that for me god damn you you created a whole bunch of shit before you put me there like that's love that's like a parent you know getting stacking up the diapers stacking up the wipes getting the clothes getting the baby furniture painting the room all of that you know even before that maybe saving up money for daycare or you know all of that thought and preparation before you know you put something there like that is genuine love so of course when I meet my creator I want to be able to say thank you all of that thought that went in um, with those creations. So two two sides of the coin. Like, what the fuck? And I love you. So yeah, one of my heart's desires would be to one day come face to face with my creator. Because from what we've learned as far as the Christian heritage is when you see God, it's so bright. You can't see. Your hair turns white. I would like to go, you know, beyond that. To be able to hug creator and, you know, not have all those effects and just how you would do you know how uh when kids are adopted they dream about meeting their parents one day and then they're able to um look up their profile and find their number or their address and actually go see them that's the same type of yearning that i have for my creator one day and then another heart's desires of mine is to get to a level of like pure love and bliss because I'm in so many different spiritual realms and everybody thinks completely differently but in one realm it's like 
um, uh, Earth Galaxy, uh, Earth Civilization 1, Earth Civilization 2, all the way up to 10. And it's like, I think we're one because we are like depleting Earth's resources. But the higher up you go, it's like there's free food and free energy and people aren't working. They're just creating and giving back and love and humanity. So another one of my desires would be for us as a humanity, as a civilization to move up a level. And you'll hear people say 3D, 4D, 5D. So it's, I think it's the same thing, just different terms. But I know God is so good. It's almost like Ohana. You know, we are family. No one left behind. So it's like keep, uh, discover what your gift is. Cultivate that gift. Share it with the world because it will heal and help someone. Whether it's dance, whether it's art, whether it's poetry, whether it's teaching, it doesn't matter. And I feel like the only way we're going to get there is if everyone digs deep discovers their gift share it it's almost like each one teach one and then we'll all be able to get there maybe not my generation maybe not my nieces and nephews generation maybe not the one that will come after but one day we'll get there and i have since corona i hate to say it i've seen so many well let's start out with the bad there was so many negative effects with covid unnecessary death lies politics hoo-ha but on the flip side of that, because this is a polarity plane, so many great things happened because of COVID. People started caring about their health so much more and not really believing every single thing that the doctor says. Like it's written in stone and it's gold. Taking responsibility for the choices and actions that they make. Spending more time with family and friends because being in quarantine and, and not being able to, you know, once that's lifted, you're like, you miss going out, you miss hanging, you know, just enjoying life more. So anyways, another of my heart's desires would be when we finally are a level 12 or whatever civilization and it's just peace, love and kumbaya because I promise I feel like I'm an alien from that civilization and i'm like what the fuck earth is ghetto who wh what did i volunteer to come here abort abort mission abort oh i think that's the dog so yeah i probably have so many more but let's go to the next question and do you think that your purpose in bringing that about is being fulfilled Absolutely. It took me fucking forever to get here, but I finally put it all together. I love to read. I was just reading the wrong genres. I always had a strong faith. I just put myself in a box. Once I switched my genre and took myself out the box, it connected. Of course, there was heartache and pain along the way. I had several teachers that were mirrors for me. Um, sometimes you'll look at, you know, oh, this person, uh, you know, lied to me. Are you lying to yourself? Cause they probably are a reflection of that. Or, oh, this person cheated on me. Well, are you cheating on yourself? Because they're probably a reflection of that. Or, oh, this person is abusive. Well, are you abusive to yourself? Cause they're probably just, you know, reflecting you back to you. So when I finally realized that I love to learn, I love to read, I love spirituality, I married the two, I couldn't share it. I just shared it. I I, I bombarded my family and my friends. <laughs> I probably ran some people away. I stumbled upon the podcast and here we are. And now I'm in the process of writing books. Because now they have apps where you can talk and it can write it for you. You can send it off to an editor. They can either help fluff it up for you or, you know, turn it into more book format. And then there's a book. But there are, just because I like to sit and read all of these books, other people may not. And I may, you know, make a 20 second video about it or put it on my podcast or put it in a book. And they may stumble across that and you know, then they can go discover the person that I was talking about or go read the book that I was mentioning. So, yes, me growing and developing in the path of my own right now are helping each one of those heart's desires to be a mom, to one day meet creator for us 
to become a tight 12 civilization and to just, you know, discover my gift, cultivate it and share it with the world. So yes, I am finally on the right path. I feel so at peace for the longest. I felt that it was money, 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 dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. But Denzel Washington made a very good point. When you die, is there a U-Haul behind that hearse with all of your belongings? And the answer is no. They put your body in that grave six feet below and that's it. All of your shit is divvied with the people that are left behind. So that just tells me our focus is not on the shit that's going to be left behind because we can't take it with us. It's on what's inside. Ha ha, what's inside? Um, not only that, I do think the Egyptians had tombs filled of shit for the afterlife, but it's still there, goddammit, <laughs> and they aren't. So again, we can't take the stuff with us, right? We leave, and so to me, I feel like my mind is going to go with me. My spirit is going to go with me. My energy is going to go with me. My chi is going to go with me. My memories are going to go with me, so I want to make sure that I'm focused on that. So, yeah. I just want you to finish these sentences. Life is. I wanted to say life is a shit show, but that's unfair because there's a lot of beautiful things inside of it. I think the shitty things that do happen can blur out all the amazing things in life, so I won't use that. I could also say life is a roller coaster. There's a lot of ups and downs. That's true, but it's not just a ride. Where I'm at right now, I feel like life is a garden. I feel like if you don't tend to the garden, a lot of weeds are going to grow. It's going to be unpleasing to the eye. Um, it probably will become infested with rodents and stuff. I feel like you have to tend to your life. You have to take out the weeds. That could be the bad habits, bad attitudes, um, get rid of the trauma. Uh, that's how I'm putting it in my book at least and plant beautiful things and that could be the things that you learn and then you let those things that you learn grow you have to put them in your mind so they can take root and watch them grow which is what with the actions that you will take with those things that you learn um, so I feel like life is a garden and I think that's why God referenced the Garden of Eden because it's just so beautiful it has everything that you need Everything that you need is in the garden. Food, shelter. When you look at people in Eastern societies and they don't live in cities and stuff, they make their house out of mud. Uh, you know, they use the wood for fire. They have the animals. And it's like the, the garden has everything that you need. So, And then there's a lot of lessons. Animals have messages. If you just watch um, how they move, they have... Uh, lessons to teach you and other people that you meet and you just learn and grow and develop so life to me is like a garden make sure you take care of your garden take uh, get rid of the weeds plant great seeds and flowers and fruits and trees and stuff and yeah just don't let the weeds weeds take over don't let the negative things in life take over your garden the world needs the world needs more people to wake up um we all have the potential to wake up some people say wake up or observe life through new perspectives or just grow and develop and be a better person to make better choices to just stop being your lower self stop being shitty just the world does need to wake up, but I've also realized that if you wake up someone too soon and they aren't ready, it's going to be more chaos, more harm than good. So I do feel like the world needs to wake up, but I'll just say the world just needs time, more time. It may take a million years before we get there, but we will. I have I have faith in humanity. Uh, if if God, he or she took their precious time to create us and was so proud of us and gave us command over the angels, 
we have to be pretty fucking awesome because, you know, angels are amazing. And we have been given command over angels in the Christian religion, I remember reading. Um, and I feel like that's why Satan got so upset. It's like, I was your number one in command and you talk about this Adam and Eve so much. What about me? It was almost like brother rivalry, you know, jealousy. Um, so if God sees that much potential in us, you know, we have to see it too. So we need more time. We need more, more time, but we also need more people to take the lead. Uh, in my culture. We have strong leaders such as yourself, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. And there's always a small number, but you guys make a, a, a huge impact. So maybe, you know, that's all I need. Michael Jackson, you know, like usually one per, even Jesus and, and, and uh, Buddha, you know, one person usually makes such a big impact. Um, what was the lady's name? That donated to all the kids and stuff. What was her name? Well, anyways, I forgot her name. But as time moves on, I don't see. We went from time changers to content creators and, and dancing and being silly. And and that's good, all good and well. You know, you're making people laugh. And laughter is medicine for the soul. However... I just think we need to get back to the life questions, the growth and development, the healing, and and not so much entertainment. So I love the work that you're doing. There's so many people stepping up to the bat like yourself, and you make such a huge impact, and you light so many flames, and I just can't wait for that next generation to, you know, take the pulpit, so to speak. But we definitely need more. Like, how long has it been? How many years since Martin Luther King, Michael Max, and nobody else stood up? Nobody else. So, yeah, uh, we need time. We need more leaders. And we need more love. Love, 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 love. We need more love. All of this hatred. I don't understand. How are you upset because that person is gay? Let them live their life. How did that disrupt your life? How? How? We just need, we definitely need more love. Um, and we need more. We need more time to discover God. I feel like. In our day, it's work, 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 bills, 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 family, 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 and a little tiny bit of time for God. And a lot of people are really good about balancing that. But what if we went back to giving Sunday to God? Or what if we added a whole nother day to the calendar for just soul search? <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know. We, we need so many things, but those are a couple that come to mind. I believe in... I believe in myself, okay, because I see me as a particle or an atom or a tiny speck of God, and if I'm just a speck of God, I'm still amazing in the same way that a drop of ocean water has the same amount of properties and sea salt, yada, 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 as the full ocean. So that drop is basically the ocean in drop form. So I believe in myself because I feel like I am a drop of God in myself and God being the ocean. And if I can believe in myself, that means I believe in everyone else because we all are a part of God. And the reason that I can believe in myself is because I believe in God. So I have two mirrors. I have a mirror maybe three I have a mirror for me to God because that is my reflection then I have a mirror for me to the mirror because I believe in me 
But then when I look at me in the mirror, I see everyone else because we all are one. So that's three, which is my life path number, isn't that uh, full circle? So um, I believe in me because that me is God, me, and you, and everybody. <laughs> and um, if I can do the work, and I can heal, and I can be my best self, me, if I can it i know you can do it and it's not easy this shit is fucking hard but it's it's literally just deprogramming you were taught one way and it's like forget everything that you were taught and you're learning all over again so to me when you wake up or when you start your spiritual journey you is zero you nine months old again and you and that's your nine month counter starts over again so i'm literally six years old because i i just i started my spiritual journey six years ago so yeah love is i just discovered love is everything every emotion on the emotional chart is love i i I was so shocked when i found that out i was like oh my god so you hear about the guy Literally, I hate to say this, there was a woman that had six beautiful daughters and a son. She was married and she was in a domestic relationship. And um, the guy stabbed her so many times and unfortunately she died and he's in jail. I would usually look at that as, oh my gosh, you know, he must hate her. Like, what's wrong with him? You know, he needs help. He's a demon. But I've learned, and I'm not saying it is right. I feel like if you don't give life, you shouldn't take it unless you are really defending yourself, like for real. Because people can, um, people can lie and say that they're defending themselves when they're not. But he loved her so much. I really feel like she was about to get out of that relationship. She was about to buy a home and he wasn't going to go with her. And sometimes when people love someone so much, it's like, if I can't have you, no one else can. That is a form of love. It's an obsessive, twisted love, but it is. It's still love. It's just on the wrong spectrum. Um, So what I learned is that love is really all emotions. When someone dies and you cry, I've just learned that grief is love. Grief is a deep, deep love. That someone that you love is no longer here anymore. You can't pick up the phone and call them. You know, you you can't see what their life would have been. It's love. It's a form of love. It's a different degree of love. And then you have joy and you have happiness and all of, all of that. Anger. Um, I guess the killing part could have been anger. But even sadness. Without sadness, would you know what happiness is? Without anger, would you know what joy is? Without hate, would you know what love is? It's like they all balance each other. And one cannot exist without the other, unfortunately. So love is literally everything. And that's why I think we are all, like, I feel like God is love. And we are all God. And, you know, when when evil is walking around and evil's doing its thing, that's why I was saying earlier, it's a part of God. <laughs> It's love and in the form of hate, you know, a version of love is hate. So I really think everything is love, but we should try to to, to get as close as we can to the, the zero point love. So let's say you have negative 100, which is on the negative evil side, and then you have 100, which is on the positive amazing side. You have a zero, which is right in the middle. I think we should <laughs> aim to be towards the middle because you don't want to go too far left or too far right because believe it or not you could love so much that you could hurt you know hurt someone uh and then you could hate so so much you know that you literally are hurting so balance in all things but i think love is everything we are love god is love everything is love Another example is the trees. We cut them down. They're 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 going to be extinct, and when we have to buy air, you know, we're going to regret it one day. Maybe our kids or great kids or, or grandkids or great grandkids. But no matter what we do to those trees, they still provide us with oxygen. No matter what we do, even dogs. You can treat a dog so bad, it still loves you. Even kids, you can 
treat them so bad they still love you even partners you can treat them like shit and they still love you so oh my gosh like everything is love the trees are giving you oxygen love you're giving them um like we like we like we feed each other so right now my mom has well we're giving them carbon they're giving us oxygen but so that's it for the for the trees but for the garden my mom is growing a garden right she's growing the garden so that she can feed her family but she can't eat all of that and she gives some of it to the animals so you have insects you have bugs you have lizards you know you have even bacteria believe it or not there's birds squirrels you name it so the plant is loving us because it's growing to feed us my mom is loving the animals because she's sharing and the animals are loving my mom because they're helping like the bees they have to pot like i didn't know the bees have to pollinate like humans have sex and they have a baby the bees are basically pollinating the flowers so let's say the flowers are the vagina the bees is like the penis is running around like they pollinate the flowers so that the fruit can grow but yeah modern medicine must modern medicine must apologize for all of the lies and the cover-ups and the deaths modern medicine must get you know, on their knees and repent and turn to holistic medicine and give her her rightful throne. Um, instead of it being big pharma, it could be a holistic nation. You know what I mean? And they could still make money the right way by healing people, by educating people. You know, instead of having residual customers, how about having healed customers? So modern medicine, you know, needs to go to court and have her day because, you know, enough is enough. Uh, back in the day, I feel like they burnt, they killed, they burnt women at the stake and called them witches. Not because of the devil, that was a lie. Because they knew the herbs, they knew healing. They were the doctors. Go back in history and see. Women were the doctors, not men. They were running shit. They could kill you. They could get on the field and fight and heal wounds. Men started to learn that secret knowledge from the women. And then shunned them and started making secret societies and burnt them and, and tried to annihilate them, essentially. The ones that were powerful. Um, so, yeah, modern medicine, she needs to have uh, her day. You know, it's time for holistic medicine to reign. I want to thank I want to thank all the spiritual gurus on my path. You know, I would start out with saying I want to thank God. But but remember, in my mind, we all are gods. But for some reason, when you come to this realm, you forget. You make bad choices. You know, you have to go on this path of, of healing and correcting yourself and making better choices. And how do you get there? Is people, other people through songs, through poetry, through art, through teachers, through gurus, through the internet, through YouTube, through books, through movies. And so if they didn't wake up and do the work and share their gift, you know, I would probably still be asleep. So that's my greatest, um, my greatest thanks. But with with me thanking all of them, I'm I'm still thanking God because we all are <laughs> essentially God and having individual lives and the reason I say that is when I play sims I'm one person sitting at a computer making a hundred little little people in the computer game and lives and they're getting married and having kids and the population is still growing but I'm one person and that's kind of how I see God like God is one living all these different lives so yeah the person I most want to be proud of me is 
the person I want to be most proud of me is myself. (laughs) And when I say that, when you're a little kid, you know, you grow up, you become a preteen, a teenager, you know, a young adult, an adult, um, you know, middle age, an elder, old, you know, there's different versions of you, but I see them as all still living. So when I see the person that I want to be most proud of me is me, it's the little girl. The little girl who wanted to be a realtor and, you know, had all of these hopes and dreams. And as I grow, I'm making choices to be able to um, fulfill that dream. But even though it's a little girl in me, it's still me. So I want to make myself proud. I stopped caring about other people a long time ago. It's not about them. It's about me. But I also have such an amazing support group that no matter what I do, my parents are proud of me. Um, My family and friends are proud of me. Like, I have just amazing cheerleaders and support system. Like, their proudness is there. The proudness that I'm working on is with myself. And it's probably just because I'm so hard on myself. I have to celebrate all of my wins. But for some reason, I like to shut it down until I win, win. Like, I wasn't too excited about getting in the master's program because I wanted to graduate. And I wanted to hold off on celebrating until after I graduated when every step of the way was a celebration. So... I just want to start being proud of myself every day because I know what my goal is and I know the situations that present themselves to me. I have choices to make that will push me to that goal or away from that goal. So, me. I am ready to forgive. I am ready to forgive myself. I've been on a self-forgiveness journey Because if I am God, God is me, and I am you, and you are me, there's no way that I can say I forgive you if I haven't forgiven me. And usually when something happens, there's uh, there's two parties at fault, but we always want to just look at one. There's what you did that was what was wrong and what I did what was what was wrong and we usually just focus on the external so much that we forget about the internal. So I your question is who do I want to forgive? I want to forgive myself, but I am already on the journey of forgiving myself. And understanding that the mind frame that I had at the times when I made choices was all I fucking had. (laughs) So, of course, those are the choices that I made. So, it's easier to forgive when you think of it that way. Like, um, you know, if if I touch the stove and I burn my hand, I could forgive myself. Because, girl, you didn't know that stove was hot. But today, I know it's hot. And I don't have to worry about burning my hand because been there, done that, like that. So it's just a continuous journey of forgiving because I may make a mistake tomorrow, but then the next day I'm going to have a whole new mindset. So it's it's easy to forgive that mistake because you only can do what you know. You only can do what you know at the time. You only can give what you have. And so, yeah, forgiveness would be for me because I understand that forgiving myself is going to be a reflection of forgiving others. So as easily as I could forgive myself, I could forgive others. But if I have a hard time forgiving myself, I'm going to have a hard time forgiving others. And I didn't get that for the longest. Same thing with self-love. Same thing with everything. It's always going to start with you. Again, that mirror is to you and God. That mirror is to you and yourself. And that mirror is to you and others. It's like, that's why we have to be careful with what we do because... If I'm hurting you, I'm hurting myself, and I'm hurting God. You see how that works? I want my legacy to be. My legacy already is. My legacy is right now. Every podcast that I've made, it has touched someone. It has planted a seed, and those seeds are going to sprout when it's time. Um, My friends and families have personal memories with them in their minds that will stay with them forever, beyond time. So my legacy has already been born. 
But another legacy that I'm working on outside of the podcast and outside of my connections with people that interact with me would be uh, books that I want to leave behind because you can go to the library, you can read books from centuries ago. You know, hieroglyphs are on the pyramids from, you know, when and words to me are like people immortal, put it that way. Uh, even songs, records and stuff, if we're still going to have the equipment to play them. But for some reason, books and papers have stood the test of time and, st- and stone and hieroglyphs and stuff. So I am in the digital world via my podcast. I'm in the minds of my close friends and family forever. And I can also become immortal in, in books. So that's what I want. My biggest, my legs, my leg, another one of my legacies. Oh, that's three people. Podcasts and books. Wow. My other legacy is going to be um, with the things that I create, uh, not just books, but I want to, you know, start selling soaps and different things like that. So, yeah. And I, and I want the legacy to be love. Like, love is. Oh my God, I just can't even explain it. Like, I must have embedded it in my DNA. Like, I don't care what you do, girl, just remember love. If you can remember love, you're going to make it out of earth. But love is just, I can't even explain it. It is everything to me. If you take love out, you know, what is the point? Love is everything to me. So, I named my store Love Me because it starts with me. I didn't want my store to be my name. I didn't want people chanting my name. I wanted them to think of Love Me as loving themselves. Love. I put love on everything because the Love Me podcast, like, it's it's always love to me. So, hopefully, I'm leaving a legacy of knowledge, you know, wisdom, and most important, love. Like the Bible says, the greatest of these is love. Whoo, that's really great. That's really great. Thank you, Oprah. It was so great being here. You asked some amazing questions. We have got to do this again. Well, podcast loves. That wraps up today's podcast episode. I will catch you guys on the next one. If Miss Oprah were to ask you these questions, what would your answers be? Wink, wink. This was not, of course, a a real uh, uh, interview in case, you know, I try to get copyright or whatever. I do have my little non-fringement disclaimer in the description or whatever. But, hey, I'm going to put this out in the atmosphere. Who knows? I may be sitting on La Miss Oprah's chair or couch one day. But, she also came across my spiritual journey and um I was like, "Oh my god, Super Soul Sunday." And she just introduced me to all these gurus and now um I came across someone else who's doing the same thing and his name is Lewis Howes and then there's there's other people that are starting to do it and it's like she sparks so many flames. And when I came across her, I was like, you know, I don't want to hear about no Buddha people. I was just only wanting to hear the, the Christian people. But now that I'm in a different place, I want to go back and re- revisit those uh, videos because o- Miss Oprah was on to something. She really was. Um, sh- she just was ahead, ahead of my time at the time, but she still crossed my path. And I was like, Super Soul Sunday. Like, sh- she didn't put herself in one box of religion. She listened to all the greats, all the gurus, and they all were talking about the same thing. Life, love, and growth, and development. And it's like put the titles down and what can you learn from each other so kudos for her um uh on one of her podcast episodes the lady had mentioned that she's on her last life like like she's done like she elevated you know she she did what she what the last thing that she needed to do so I thought that was pretty um amazing too so i finally was able to do the oprah interview and i thought this one was real cute but what will your answers be for real what will your answers be to those questions i'd love to know (laughs) 
is 7.9 billion people in this world, yet you met me. And that is not by happen chance. It's a divine meeting. And may we guide each other well. If life is a school, what lesson did you learn today? What class did you take today? Did you pass or fail your test or pop quiz? If so, it's okay. Failing allows you to restudy an area that you're weak in so you can try again better than before and pass with 100%. Keep learning, evolving, and spreading love. And I hope you see the fruits of your labor. Namaste, love a say, and always vibe high, babe. Thanks a million for listening. I hope you have a better than great day. Love you. Talk to you later. Mwah. Bye.